And I went to London and I was um, living with these amazing um, life coaches and kinesiologists and just inspiring, beautiful couple. Um, and I was like, yay, like-minded people. <laughs> we just ate organic food and we giggled and I just kind of nurtured myself back to well-being a little bit and away from the industry and away from judgment and away from um, just, you know, a bit of pain. And then I was hanging out with this darling friend of mine who's an incredible musician, so talented, and he's just like, ah, fired up the whole time and working so hard and just doesn't matter if he's doing 17 hour, 18 hour days. And I was like, that's what I want. That's, mm. that's what I want to do. I want to be like that and have so much love to give and love my job so much that it doesn't matter if you're not making any money. And I thought, like, what can I do, the equivalent of that, that I can do this lifetime that's realistic? Okay, I love to dance. Okay, yeah, a bit too old to start being a, a ballet dancer. <laughs> kind of, yeah, maybe not that. We'll do that for fun on the side. You know, what else? I love to cook. I'm a really, really good cook without sounding like a wanker. No. I'm a really good cook. I've got a lot of friends who are professional cooks who've been telling me I should get into that. So I thought, that's an avenue. So I kind of came back to Australia feeling so grateful for everything and, and you know when you've gone down that road and pulled yourself apart and dusted it off and put yourself back together and had so much more understanding of who you are and how much I love my man and how much I love being in Australia because at that time I was like oh, I just want to get away yeah. oh, you know <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then um, approached and kind of actually mutually we had a, a mutual uh, bras and things approached me and we approached them oh, cool. and signed off with a company now that love and appreciate the fact that I'm a passionate environmentalist um, and got that happening. Great. When's it? When's it? It's launched. It's launched. In store. Really? Selling like hotcakes. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I have, I've actually ordered you some. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Organic cotton. Well, I've given everything away so that's handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least you can have one bra. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be thanking me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so then, so... That was basically pretty much my whole life rearranged. Mm. Um, but within still, you know, making things happen. So using my experience and my connections and the wonderful people who have supported me for so long in this industry. Because yeah. there's so much good in it as well. Obviously, we all know the negatives. Yeah. But just kind of basically looking at the positives and bringing that in and just being on track. Mm. And now I just cannot tell you, I love life so much. I'm so passionate about what I do. And the cooking and the love lunch, yeah, feeding people, making you know, knowing people are healthy, making them feel good, yeah, knowing girls are supported, like <laughs> literally, <laughs> you know, because what do you do when you've got big, you know, it's just yeah. really hard, and, definitely. Mm. Well, and now the joy, the latest venture, which is really, really exciting. So you, yeah, everything's going brilliantly, and hopefully, um, hopefully, you don't have any more too difficult times in the foreseeable future. Is there anything that you wish? I wish I knew this back then. You know, for anybody out there who's having trouble getting um, past something. I guess, yeah, I think I, you know, no matter how difficult the situation, and I lost my father to cancer, mm -hmm. I lost my good darling, darling grandpa, I lost a really good friend, mm -hmm. and my two films fell through, and I had to give up a lot, you know, I, I pretty much went through yeah. a really, really, really rough patch, and at some time you go, why, you know? God, how can this be divine? It's so unfair, you know. But actually now I'm through it. I realise that it all was perfect and it is all a blessing because it's made me who I am and made me stronger and given me so much more grace. Yeah. So I think that no matter how difficult the situation is, it is all divine mm. and it will get better. And it's there for a reason. And maybe just to look at that reason, not be a victim, you know, yep. and to be a survivor and get through it, and then it'll all shine so brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <a> plan. <laughs> Do you believe in, in flow and the universe providing and all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wholeheartedly believe in that. Um, and I also believe in, you know, what you give, you shall receive. You know, mm. just, I'm, I'm constantly being criticised, being too, too giving and too generous, but it's like, hey, this innately how I am I'm innately positive I'm innately generous and I am the luckiest person I get so much stuff given to me and I give so much and yeah. I think that's how it works this flows in and out yeah mm. yeah awesome. okay. so the, there's lots of people out there who are stuck in their lives yeah 
and they're at home and they're sitting on the couch and they've got their nine to five jobs and they have no passion in their life but they know because most people have this burning deep down for something more than what it is that they're doing yeah you obviously go after it you've yeah. you've managed to get the tools to enable you you, you obviously were blessed with several tools you know you. looks and, and the like but you've still got to put those into use what advice would you give to those people who who know there's more from life but just can't seem to I think you have to follow your instincts. I think you have to be brave as well. Fear is so debilitating. And I, for a long time, didn't have enough, even though I knew, you know, deep down, I was capable of doing a lot more than I was doing. I was fearful. Yeah. And I think fear, you have to be able to overcome, give it a go, give it a go, just give it a shot and, and follow your dreams and make it happen because what's the worst? You yeah. fail. Hey, you're failing anyway if you're living there, not doing what you want to do. So, so how do you deal with uh, fear directly? Because it's you know a lot of people say, oh, you know, overcome your fears. Yeah. And then you're sitting there in your fear, going, yeah, right. Okay. So specifically, um, you know, criticism, or if I do this, people are going to think I'm that, or yep. all the things that hold most people back, most of us back, from just taking that big leap of faith. I think um, for me, yoga and meditation is a massive part in determining what's rational and irrational. Right. Um, helping you kind of get over that. Um, <laughs> and then it's like, you know, you do a really good yoga class, do some meditation, you come back into yourself and you go, hey, that's fear, that's okay. Ah, okay. You know, let's make this happen. So you're saying those, those things actually help you distinguish between Definitely. what's fear and what's real? Yep. Okay. Definitely. And how often would you do those? What, what do you think the amount times people would have to do them to be a benefit? Um, I like to do yoga at least three times a week. Right. Um, I also see a kinesiologist, Peter Bablis, who is amazing and has has had such an impact in my life right. um, with helping with, with that, I guess, being able to... Um, I think, I mean, without I don't know, I hope it makes sense, but for me, a massive, massive factor is knowing if I am being a non-head, if I'm just being scared and, and, and you know, fearful of what people think, or if that fear is actually real. Yeah. If, you know, I'm a very intuitive person, okay, if I have got a fear about something, I don't have a good vibe, don't do it, right? But sometimes you just talk yourself into this thing because of fear yeah. um, and being judged, and it's actually not on track whatsoever. So I think through kinesiology for me, through yoga, meditation, it really helps just to, to really just to be in tune and to know that difference. And then you can act, work hard yeah. on what's real and what you really want. And hey, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Like, yeah. you know, you'd never judge someone for trying to do what they want to do and then it failed. Yeah. You'd be saying, that's amazing. Yeah, we forget that though, don't we? We think we'll mm. be judged and everyone will laugh at us. Yeah.